Let's talk about arrays and typed arrays in JavaScript, or, or TypeScript if you're more sensible. I love TypeScript. So when we think about arrays in other languages, um, we think about them as these fixed size, contiguous, homogeneous data structures. Okay, so data contiguous is um, just a fancy word for beside each other. Homogeneous just means that they're all the same. And why would we choose this data structure? Why would we not use a linked list or a normal list or a, a map or something like that? Um, they're really good at random access by index. Uh, it's super easy because you just take the size of one of the elements, they're all the same, and you multiply it by the index and there you go, you're at the memory location that you want. They're really good at sequential access because hardware has this thing called caching, which means then that when we're accessing one memory address, the system will typically have cached uh, memory addresses that are nearby. So because these things are contiguous, when we're reading through them one after the other, we get really, really good performance. And they typically have a low memory overhead because we don't have any wrapper objects or frames or anything like that that goes around each of the elements within the array, so we can store a lot of them very efficiently. There's only the overhead of the array as a single entity, and then all of the data is beside each other. So what are they bad at? Why wouldn't we use them? Again, in most languages, they're fixed size, uh, which is not that convenient. If you want to grow or shrink, you have to re reallocate and do copies, which can be expensive. And they're not really good by for doing random access by anything else, because you typically have to search through every element to find the thing that you're looking for. So that's in most languages, and that's typically what I would have always thought of with arrays. In JavaScript, arrays are a different beast. Um, they can be sparse, uh, which means that not every index has to be populated. You could have an array that has you know, length 1 million, but only two of the elements are populated. And in this model, the array, it behaves a bit more like a hash table or a normal object in JavaScript. Uh, when you access something by index, it has to do a lookup into the data structure, which typically could be hashing or going through a linked list. And this can remove a lot of the efficiencies because the data is no longer contiguous, the lookups uh, can be slower. So this is not necessarily desirable. Sometimes sparse data structures like these are really, really useful, but it's not the typical use case that we would go to. Um, so in JavaScript, the arrays behave a little bit more like lists because we can add and remove things to them. And because JavaScript's a dynamic language, we can also add and remove completely different kinds of objects, different kinds of data. And in these cases, then we lose a lot of these benefits of being able to go immediately to or directly to the data that we want by index because it's no longer homogeneous, it's no longer uh, contiguous, so and we lose a lot of the caching benefit. So yeah, they're they're not as as good a data structure and not the same kinds of arrays that we're maybe used to in other languages. Now, in reality, the situation is a little bit different. JavaScript engines are incredibly clever beasts. Uh, if the array is not sparse and if the array contains all the same kind of data, under the hood, it will use a contiguous block of memory. It will use a contiguous array. And it behaves a little bit like an array list in Java or a list in, in C Sharp, where it allows you to have all of the benefits of a list you can add and remove. Uh, but transparently under the hood, it's using a contiguous array. So this is something you can actually do in your JavaScript, JavaScript code today if you wanted to optimize. If you have blocks of codes that are using arrays, is to treat your array certain uh, uh, in certain ways. So don't put different kinds of data in your in your arrays. Keep the objects the same, uh, and you'll not get uh, penalized. Uh, don't pre-allocate arrays because that's not as efficient as just adding items to it. Don't populate them sparsely or delete items uh, and things like that. There, those are some of the ways that you can make your array behavior more efficient in JavaScript. But that's normal JavaScript arrays, and I also want to talk about typed arrays. So what are these? These were introduced in ECMAScript 6 or ES 2015, and they provide efficient ways of storing numbers in fixed size contiguous arrays. Okay, So they're really, really good when we're transferring large blocks of numbers as binary data. Think about media, think about network communication, think about WebGL. These are the kinds of things that these data structures were built for. And, and why were they required when you know arrays can be optimized under the hood uh, to be contiguous blocks of memory? Well, it's really down to the, the way the arrays can behave and also the way that numbers behave in JavaScript. So if you know your JavaScript, all numbers are going to be 64-bit floating point numbers according to the IEEE 754 standard. Okay, There's also big integer, but we'll, we'll ignore those for now. So if you want to have an array, and those arrays are numbers which are only going to be bytes, one byte, or 32-bit integers, which are going to be four bytes, or 32-bit floating point numbers, which are going to be four bytes, 
all of those, doesn't matter what the range of numbers that you're using is, the, if you're using a JavaScript number, it's going to be 64-bit or 8 bytes, which is not that efficient. Typed arrays allow us to have these contiguous blocks for signed and unsigned integers of 8, 16, 32, or 64-bit, as well as 32-bit or 64-bit floating numbers. So typed arrays allow us to be a lot more efficient, as well as being able to transfer the binary data in the format expected, for example, as 16-bit contiguous integers rather than the 64-bit floating point numbers. At the heart of typed arrays is the array buffer type, and this provides us a block of data raw bytes. Okay, these are our raw bytes. And then on top of this sit views that interpret that byte data of a particular type. So we can create int 8 arrays for uh, signed 8-bit integer numbers, and there's a uint Eight array equivalent. There's an int 64 and a uint 64 array, an int 32 and a uint 32 array, and there's uh, float 32, float 64, and so on and so forth. So there's different ways of interpreting those raw bytes as a particular uh, number standard. Now the great thing about the typed arrays is that we can create an array and have it allocate the underlying array buffer for us or we can create a view onto an existing buffer. And this is something that's really really powerful because it allows us when we're reading and writing raw bytes to then interpret those bytes in a particular format without doing any copying. So it's very, very efficient. So for example, we could create a float32 array view onto an existing array buffer, which we were just at up until that point, treating as raw bytes. And we can use this to actually create views onto whole array buffers or also subsets. So if we know that between a particular byte and another byte is a certain kind of data, then we can interpret that way. There's also data views as well, which allow us to efficiently read and write uh, multiple different kinds of data. But quite often we're treating these as, as homogeneous blocks. And these views avoid lots of copying, so they're a lot more efficient. So in conclusion, you know, what I really want to get across with this is think about your data structures. So think about how they work and think about why you're choosing one particular data structure over another. Understand how arrays work in JavaScript and how they differ from arrays in other kinds of languages. And then have a look at typed arrays if you haven't already done so. You don't need them, but some APIs make really, really good use of them. And if you're dealing with raw binary data, then they're a really cool, really useful data structure. Thanks for watching.